Hello and welcome to Publisher Spotlight, where we will present several several publishers for you that are diverse and inclusive books for kids and teens from around the world. So let's get started, shall we? First of all, these are the publishers, Nosy Crow, Albatross, Nubio Cho, Pajama Press, Red Comet Press, and Diamond Book Distributors. So we'll be showcasing books from all these publishers in the next few minutes. Contact me, Ellen, at PublisherSpotlight.com, and follow us at Pub Spotlight on all your favorite social media channels. First up, Diamond Book Distributors. So Diamond has long been one of the primary go-to sources for graphic novels in English around the world. And so it's only fitting that we start off with Shepherdess Warriors by Jonathan Garnier and Amélie Fléché, who is, um, they're both in France, and these are translated from the French for us here in the United States. And the cool thing about them, about this particular title actually, is the fact that this one, the prize for the best middle grade graphic novel in the world at the recent Angoulême Graphic Novel Comic Book Festival. This is the, the big international graphic novel conference and this is the best one. So there you go. So what makes it so good? Well, this is based on Celtic mythology, which is always a win. And this has strong female protagonists. So in this case, we have uh, a village where all the men went away to fight a, a war 10 years ago. And did they just sit around and wait for their men to come back? No, they didn't. When they were gone, they decided to form a band of shepherdess warriors to defend their village and also to do the things that the men had done in traditional times. So this follows the story of one girl who really wants to be a shepherdess warrior. It's kind of think Amazons, you know, that's this kind of thing, but with a Celtic sort of flavor to it. And we follow her as she goes through the... Um, the trials of becoming a shepherdess warrior and then some of her adventures are of, as a shepherdess warrior herself. The art is beautiful. It's very engaging and also just, just cool. So great stories, great female protagonists, um, lots of, you know, kids being active and changing the world and saving the world. Good stuff. So hooray for Molly. Next up, we have Chroma. Now, this may be the most the coolest cover you see today. Uh, this is by Lorenza De Felici, and this comes to us from Image Books. So this is a story of a world where color has been banished. It is viewed as dangerous. Hmm, does this sound anything like what's happening in the world where some ideas are being viewed as dangerous? I don't know. But everyone lives behind these walls in a completely colorless environment, and there is a strong tower where a monster is kept hidden and released every year. Now, there is a symbolic release of the monster, and then the monster is captured by a group of young men who, that's what they're raised to do, is to capture the, mon the monster and to defend their, their, uh, their community. So this is happening, the monster is released, and then, I'm not gonna tell you anymore, am I? Hmm. So then the monster is released and the, there's, the men capture him, the young men capture it, and then they, as they're doing it, as they're subduing this monster, one of the, the, uh, one of the boys realizes that he sees a very, very blue eye, and inside the monster looks like it's a girl. So he is just haunted by this. So at nighttime, when everybody's asleep, he creeps up to the tower and works his way around the guard and finds the girl who is kept who is kept prisoner there. Her father is the lord of the land outside of their walls. And this is the way that they, they keep her hostage to keep things in check. So he decides to release her, as one does. And they have to defend themselves outside and against giant lizards and all sorts of adventures, but it's a beautiful story, coming of age, science fiction fantasy, and the art is just absolutely glorious. So check out Chroma. Next up from Diamond, we have Clementine. Now, if you haven't seen anything from Tilly Walden in the last few years, you just haven't been paying attention. She is the hottest YA author going. And it makes sense that Robert Kirkman, Kirkman, who started the Walking Dead franchise as a graphic novel many, many, many years ago, selected her to be the person to expand that universe into the YA realm. So Clementine came out a year ago. This is the second volume. Clementine is kind of licking her wounds from the first, all the adventures in the first one, and she's found a safe haven where she is a kind prot protectress who saves her and helps nurture her back. And... And then she begins to wonder, is she really as kind as she seems? What else is going on here? So lots of things going on. But as I said, 
This is the only Robert Kirkman endorsed uh, YA edition in the walk Walking Dead world. So we got zombies, we have strong female protagonists, and lots of adventure. So Clementine. Next up, Ava's Demon, Book One Reborn. So the second biggest webcomic Kickstarter in history, up to the point of this being published, um, is Ava's Demon. And this is by Michelle Foos. She is such an amazing world she's created here. So this is a very much a high school story. And it's also a story of a girl who is haunted by this demon who can take over and make her do things she doesn't want to do. And it's just very uncomfortable for her. She doesn't like it. And here's the interesting part. This is a high school that is set in a space station. So it's an outer space. And it becomes clear that something's going to happen to the space station. So she and her demon and the boy she really likes and her best frenemy all escape and it becomes a kind of a high school science fiction romance coming of age you name it it's all in here and it's very very cool the art is beautiful and it is going to keep you turning pages until the very end so much angst so much angst but it also has a has a very nice spirit about it so this is what you, you know a lot of high schoolers seem to have hidden demons don't they Hmm. So Ava's very shy, but the demon helps her not be so shy. So the darkness we brought back. This is a group of high schoolers, and they are um, very disparate from very different backgrounds, uh, different kind of on the pecking order of high school from very different levels of that pecking order. And they find this door and they go through it. Don't they know you should never go through the door, but they do. And do they find there? Here you can see one of them being bullied, all usual high school stuff. They go through the door and this is what they bring back. So how are they going to save themselves and save the world? Well, that is just the mystery that's going to be revealed in the darkness we brought back. So gripping graphic novel. And look at these authors. I bet you know the name Rex Ogle, don't you? He wrote Free Lunch, which won so many awards a few years ago from Norton Young Readers. He's an amazing storyteller and we're really excited that he's in the graphic novel world as well. So lastly, from Diamond, I have Tolkien Lighting Up the Darkness. So this is graphic nonfiction, and it is about Tolkien and his experiences during World War I, which is when it is believed that many of the ideas for Middle Earth were formed in the backdrop of that very bloody, um, very brutal war. And so what we see here is what happened in the war, what happened to him, um, as the ideas start to take shape of what Middle Earth might be like, and it's just amazing. It's it's a just a deep dive into one of the world's favorite authors of really all time. So if you have any Lord of the Rings fans, this is one they're going to want, and the art is fantastic. So that is what I got from Diamond. Now let's move on to Pajama Press, based in Canada and Toronto, and they do books really from all over the world. So we love working with them, and they've won lots of major awards. Uh, I'm also very excited that they're bringing friends back. So you may remember Mies van Hoot's art. This is a story of the different stages, all told with these incredibly engaging little monsters on these really vivid, bold illustrations by Mies van Hoot. So, you know, you meet somebody, you start to play with them. And then, you know, somebody gets their feelings hurt and you ignore. Then what do you do? You have a fight about it because, you know, you just fight with your new friends, right? And then somebody's going to cry. It's inevitable. And then, of course, in the end, we all have a nice cuddle. So there are several more stages in here, but this gives you an idea of the artwork and just how generally appealing this is. Perfect for story time for that preschool toddler's age range and it's just um you know i love to get, let the little kids tell me the story when i have a book like this so what do you think is happening on this page what happened before what happened after all those good things yeah just read megan dowd lambert's sharing picture books with children to learn some techniques there but you already all know this so so i mentioned friends and this is from the creator of the unforgettable happy guess what happy is back it's the 10th anniversary yay and it is bigger and bolder than ever. So it is a slightly larger size than it was before. And it, just the intensity of the art and the beautiful five color printing process makes these little fish with all their different emotions just leap off the page. And it's just so much fun. So it's social emotional literacy for children. 
But I remember when this first came out 10 years ago that I would have a lot of high school teachers and librarians want to get this book because for neurodiverse kids who had trouble recognizing some of those emotions, this was a great way into those conversations and to recognizing those things. So that is Happy by Mies van Hoot. Now, Baram Rahman, you probably know that name. He wrote The Library Bus, which was on the rise list, which took place in Afghanistan. He also wrote The Sky Blue Bench, which was a book that takes place in a refugee camp in Afghanistan and was a Schneider family honor book. And this one is, um, those two took place in Afghanistan. This one is about a, a new immigrant who is originally from Afghanistan and adapting to the life here in North America and what that is like. Um, still honoring and remembering his past, and he does miss it desperately. His grandmother helps him to kind of appreciate where he is and, and learn some of the traditions of where he is now and some of the foods and some of the ideas, one of which is if you see a bluebird, you can make a wish. So what we see here is a lovely intergenerational um, relationship. Uh, obviously, blackberries don't taste like mulberries, as you can see, sticking out his tongue and his memories. And then just making his peace with where he is and learning how to grow and um, be happy, be content where he is. So this is by Ramon. Uh, Roman, and then Gabriel Grimard, who did um, Coco Magic last season, if you remember that book, she's just magical, uh, did the illustrations for this one. So career books, can you ever have enough really good, solid career books? So see it, dream it, do it. This is by um, Colleen Nelson, who is a middle, middle school teacher, and Kathy McIsaac, who is an established nonfiction author. And this looks at 25 people, very diverse people, who have found their dream jobs. So we're very excited about this. And what we have here are different things that people can do. And not only does it describe their dream, dream jobs, but also has tips on how people can get those careers and also spin off jobs. So here we go. You can see some of the different things. If you're a fitness trainer, you wanna be a fitness trainer or coach, or maybe maybe what you really wanna be is a, a therapist. You wanna be an occupational therapist or a physical education teacher. So many different things if you wanna be a coach. And uh, there's another one. And then here we have a forensic artist. That's a career that kids can have. And here's some different jobs, pathologists, detectives, art therapists. So lots of great ideas for kids. So perfect thing to do if you have kids who are trying to figure out their next thing. I and mean, everyone has that, that unit where you have to come up with what you want to be when you grow up. So this is a perfect resource for that. So The Umbrella House, this is from the, the author of The Undercover Book List. And it's about an intrepid girl who wants to save her building. It is threatened with demolition. She lives in the Lower East Side in New York City. And this is based on a true story that the author saw in the newspaper when she was living there many, many years ago. But there was a house that had uh, you know, an up and down brownstone that had all these umbrellas hung out the windows. And there were so many interesting stories of people who lived there and the artist co collective who had made their home there. And the girl decides to be an activist and to get this place established as a true artist um, colony and ends up, you know, saving the building. So it's an amazing story of student activism, a, a child uh, making change in her community by seeing a need and filling it. And also it's just a really cool story. So there you have it. Next up, Michelle Cutterusman, who always brings the magic. This is We the Sea Turtles, a collection of island stories. These are nine stories from around the world. Michelle Cutterusman, you may remember, she's been um, honored by the Outstanding International Books Committee. She was originally born in Indonesia and now lives in Canada and these stories look at island magic and these are islands all over the world and it's not just the ones you would think about you know like Komodo Island is certainly there but also Manhattan yeah that's an island um, Turtle Shell Island is in northern New South Wales Australia which is another place that that uh, Michelle lived for a while so in every one of these stories there is a magical sea turtle who makes an appearance and there's an underlying theme of being aware of what is happening with the environment and being environmentally conscious so just a beautiful story and I don't think there are enough collections of short stories for kids so I'm glad to see that Michelle is, is adding to that to that um, area because it's needed next up from Albatross 
This is a publisher based in the Czech Republic, or Czechia as it's being called these days. And they do a lot of nonfiction. They license books all over the world. They have a huge pu publishing program. And I'm so excited that they're available here in the United States now. So Shapescapes is a concept book and it is so much fun. It takes things you would actually find in the real world and looks at them in terms of shapes. And there are lots of books about that, but not on this scale. So sometimes we'll see an orange as representative of a sphere, but how often do you see a roundabout as a representative of a circle in a book? This is the only one I know of like that. And it also has other things inside the circle that also are circles, so very, very cool. Um, the rectangle one just makes me laugh because you know a bed is a rectangle, and then you can see all the things that are rectangular on there. We have the, the vehicles, we have the, the book, the magazine, the phone, um, you know, even the pillows are things that are rectangular. So lots of things to discover on every single page. And of course, you got to use a triangle, a pyramid for a triangle, just because, right? It, I think it's a law, maybe a law. I don't know. Do you think it is? So that is that one. Next up, this is a fiction story about Henry the snail. So Henry is a differently abled snail because he has no slime. And if you know anything about snails, you know that slime is how they're able to stick to the, you know, to perpendicular surfaces. So poor Henry is not able to do those things. But, you know, he's not poor Henry because he figures out other things that he can do. And that is OK. So, yeah, he can't climb this little bing stop, but he can also do things like flip himself places. And um, what does he do when he realizes he has this ability? You can see him climb. Yeah. As he starts a circus, as one does. And, you know, a snail circus is really quite the thing for the for the buggy, creepy, crawly world. And everybody turns up to go see what is happening at the bug circus. So there you have it. So cool. So cool. So this is Henry the snail. And it is a model for creativity and resilience. And the art is just beautiful, as you can see. Now, this next story is actually true. So Tibbles is a cat that did live in the 19th century and he was taken to with his owner um, to this little island off the coast of New Zealand, St. Stephen's Island. And um, while he was there, he discovered this amazing wingless, flightless, you know, bird and it was it couldn't really defend itself and Tibbles ate very well for for like in a year. And by the end of that year, the St. Stephen's Wren was extinct. So this is a true story. And it is told in a somewhat lighthearted manner, but at the same time makes you think about the impact that we can have. One little cat can actually wipe out entire species. So if that can happen, what other things can happen when more people don't pay attention to what th their impact is on the world around them? Um, it, it just uh, shows you in a this really amazing, interesting way about how we impact the environments in which we live and what people did when that happened and what they did not do. So very interesting stuff. How not to kill your plant. So this is um, a story. This is basically a nonfiction book on base on how to take care of your plants. And it has so much information in here, lots of different points of entry for reluctant readers. But any kid who really wants to make things grow is going to find so much to learn from here. And frankly, I learned a lot from this book. So I do not have a green thumb and it isn't any greener right now, but it may be not a quite be as brown as it was before so these are all the things you need when you're trying to have an indoor indoor garden and some of the different plants you could have and what the care of them is like the care and feeding um, how, when you need to prune them how you can get get more plants from them you can make them propagate and so much information so basics of plant care it's an encyclopedia of house plants and so much more also from Albatross, we have Famous Finds and Finders. There are lots of books that look at the wonders of the natural world, I mean, of the ancient world, but there aren't that many that really talk about the archaeologists and paleontologists and such who discover them. So that's what this book does. And it looks at 40 different things from around the world, how they were discovered, and then goes into much more information about the person who did it, who found them, and what they found, and how they found it. Fascinating stuff. So much to discover here, and I think that uh, everybody will really learn from this book. I know I did. So it, it's organized in five sections, people and animals, towns and cities, works of art, under the sea, and under the ground. 
So there you have famous finds and finders searching for the past. Next up, means of transport that almost changed the world. So we often hear about the things that actually happened, the inventions that worked, but what about the ones that didn't work? What you see here is a collection of a vehicular, um, vehicular invention that didn't quite get off the ground or go forward or any of those things. And it is filled with so many fascinating ideas that maybe we can learn from today. And it just shows the ingenuity of people and it's okay not to succeed every time. Because if you fail at one thing, you may learn something that you can apply to another time and then succeed. But it's okay to fail. I mean, I can't even look at this one without actually getting a little bit dizzy. Kind of tough. But it's fascinating, isn't it? So, yes, and this is the coolest one, I think, in the whole book. So these are things that people try to make happen, and they just didn't quite make it. So in great, gorgeous art um, that just really, it's almost sepia tone. It's very, very cool. So next up, we, our next publisher is Nosy Crow. So a little bit about Nosy Crow. You're thinking, I know about Nosy Crow. They're distributed by Candlewick, aren't they? And you're right. They were until 2019, which is when they stopped being distributed by Candlewick. Candlewick still has all of their books from before that time, but they are relaunching here in the United States this month with a whole new list, and they're now being distributed elsewhere. So you can get them easily, and Nosy Crow always does amazing stuff. And the nice thing is that only a few of the things they did before made it over to the States. Now we're going to see more and more of the cool things that will, that originated in uh, the Nosy Crow list. This is my favorite counting, uh, my favorite read aloud book of the year, and it is my favorite counting book of all time, frankly. How to Count to One. So let's have a little bit of a story time, shall we? Hello, welcome to a fun new counting book. Are you ready to start counting? Let's start with something nice and easy. Do you know what an apple looks like? Good. Simply count how many apples you see. Thank you. I heard you say one. Yes, that's right. Just one. Now what about this? How many sausages do you see? So you see what it did there? Instead of having whales and being incrementally more, you're looking for the one thing that is on that page. So bravo. You're really getting the hang of counting to one. But it's going to get more difficult now. How many flies are in the soup? So you get the idea. So much fun. It can be enjoyed on multiple levels. And I cannot wait to share this at story time. So we see more objects and everything, but you're always looking for the one object. And then by the end, you get the prize. And there are a hundred different objects to count in the end that are all the different things that were included on all those different pages. So, so much fun, so many different ways to enjoy. And that is how to count to one. So lots, this is a book that, that bears up to several rereadings and uh, it includes a stories aloud video audio, which is something I really want to tell you about because this is a QR code in the back of the book and there is a fully produced audio book for each one of their narratives. Their, ah! They were my computer narrative books. Hope everyone did not get dizzy with that. And next up, I'm going to be a princess, a story about inspirational black women and girls. So this, yes, we, we always celebrate um, black women in history during Black History Month. We look at it during Women's History Month. But you know what? It doesn't have to be just that time of year, right? So here we go. This is a little girl who wants to be like Annie Easley, who we learned about in Hidden Figures. Uh, she was just a, an early computer programmer, and she helped make it possible for us to get to the moon. She learns about Princess Amina, who was a warrior princess from Africa, uh, the Zazu Kingdom in West Africa from 500 years ago. I'd never heard of her before. It's amazing information. But this is something that would work really well for a read aloud situation, but also presents really good, solid nonfiction. So that is I'm Going to Be a Princess, a story about inspirational black women and girls by Stephanie Taylor, illustrated by Jade Orlando. So um, it's I, it's a book that is worthy of the tiara, I think. So yes, let's be let's be a princess. Next up, who enjoys a funny poem? I know I do. And the, this is an anthology of 365 poems that can be read each day of the year. You don't have to read them that way, but you know, why wouldn't you? 
Uh, I know a lot of schools will start the day with a poem. You could start it with a class. You can use it as a thing, a palate cleanser between subjects. But I think that wouldn't it be fun to do story time, start with a poem every time you do story time for certain age ranges. It could be a great way to to really get across the, the beauty and the fun of poetry because poetry can be so much fun. And this has creators that you would know, uh, John Agard, Ogden Nash, Langston Hughes, Linda Sue Park. So some amazing people. And, you know, this is one I think you might enjoy. Don't go into the library. The library is dangerous. Don't go in. If you do, you know what will happen. It's like a pet store or a bakery. Every single time you come out of there holding something in your arms, those novels with their big eyes and those no-nonsense, all-muscle greyhounds and Dobermans, all nonfiction and business, cuddly when they're young, but then the first page is turned. The donut scent of it all, knowledge the aroma of coffee being made, in all those books something for everyone, the deli offerings of civilization itself. The library is the book of books. It's concrete and wood and glass covers, keeping within them the very big, very long story of everything. The library is dangerous, full of answers. If you go inside, you may not come out the same person who went in. And that's by Alberto Rios. So don't go into the library. And that's A Whale of a Time, a funny poem for every day of the year, selected by Luke Peacock and illustrated by Matt Hunt, who I think you'll agree did a beautiful job with this. So, much fun. Granny came here on the Empire Windrush. I had never heard this story before. This is actually, this month is the 75th anniversary of the the wind rush arriving in the UK and this is one of the largest migrations in the history of, of the UK and it was people coming from the West Indies and many of them came on this ship so this is uh, this story is told in the framework of a little girl who's given an assignment to come as a person in history for school and she feels like all the good ones have been taken so she's talking to her granny about it and she makes some suggestions and you know that's okay but somebody already has that person and then granny starts telling her about her own story about how she came over when she was a young woman and what she brought with her and it wasn't very much but she was able to make so much from that and this and so then when she has to decide who she's going to be for the pageant well, she comes as her grandmother. So it's a beautiful intergenerational story about honoring your your um, ancestors and their experiences and telling their story for a new generation, which is a beautiful thing. So this, um, this author is an MBE. She's won so many different awards, and I love this illustrator. She's a fairly new, and her name is Camille Sucre, and it's just gorgeous art that I think she's going to have on her way to a very nice career. Next up, we have transported, I promised you more transportation things, right? So 50 vehicles that actually did change the world. These are not the ones that almost did, but these ones actually did. And let's learn more about them, shall we? So here is the table of contents with all the information about the ones we're going to see. And gorgeous illustrations, really interesting. Perfect for those kids who grew up wanting all the different truck books, all the different vehicle books, all the construction books. And here they can learn the next level of information. So how wagons came to be, the Seaborn battering ram, it's so darn cool. So many amazing things. And I know that th there are certain kids that are just going to think this is the best book ever. And then we have a history of the world in 25 cities. So this is, these are the different cities, and it starts with Jericho and ends with Tokyo. And you learn about the history of those cities through maps. So it is a map of how that city would have looked at a, at a certain time. And then what, what are the different ways that people, um, how did they live? What did they live in? How did they get food and water? How did they um, defend themselves? All this information is provided on each one of these really detailed spreads that is also really beautiful to look at. So lots of great information. Yeah. So by Tracy Turney, Andrew Duncan, illustrated by Libby Vanderpolig. So we're very plogue. Yes. Gorgeous guide to 25 cities. And here you can see some of the cities included. Jericho, Memphis, Athens, Xinjiang, Rome, Constantinople, Baghdad, etc., etc., New York City, Berlin, San Francisco, and Tokyo. So, yes. Throughout history, around the world. And next up. So I have a secret to tell you. Do you remember that really beautiful Her Story book that came out from Simon & Schuster a few years ago? Well, that started life as a nosy crow book. It was actually licensed to them. So I think you can tell that when you look at Goddess. This is a big, beautiful, oversized, gorgeous book with so much fascinating information. And it is very much from that same tradition. Here you can see how it's organized, um, ruling and guiding, new life, 
War and Death, Love and Wisdom, Animals and Nature. And then every page is somebody, a different um, female goddess from around the world, and you learn information about it, about her and, and how she, what kinds of power she had and why people revered her. So it's fascinating. Um, I learned a lot from this book, and I'm sure that anybody would as well. But, you know, for girls who are looking for their goddesses, this might be a good way to check it out. Oh, Rhiannon, Aptini, Sri Lankan goddess of purity and fighter against injustice. We need more fighters against injustice. And we have Izanami, who is a Japanese goddess of death and new life. Just a few of the different ones we have here. So, yeah, can't wait for this one. It's coming out this fall. Look for it. Next up, we have Nube Ocho. So Nube Ocho, The Mouse Who Ate Books. This is by Jose Carlos Andres and Catherine Sieg. And we have here uh, a mouse who just consumes all the stories and finds them ex extremely delicious. And he goes to the bookstore and the bookseller, instead of being appalled, uh, actually puts the mouse to work and has the mouse um, gathering people up for c coming to story time. So he expands the audience for the bookstore, and this is available in Spanish. So Nube Ocho is based in Madrid, Spain, but the books they do for the U.S. market are all done in Latino Spanish, not Castilian Spanish. So just be aware of that. And the ones they originate, they do in English and Spanish, and then they are also doing Spanish language um, versions of some bestsellers from the U.S. market. So another one we have is A Big Book of Butts. Or El Libro de los Traseros. This is nonfiction about the butt, nothing but the butts. And you find out not just human butts, but also different animal butts, too. So, you know, let's look at this. Did you know manatees can propel themselves through the water with their poop? It's true. Um, so, locomotive butts, dangerous butts, motorized butts, and also different ways people express themselves with their butts. The Big Book of Butts, so much information, science, language, art. There's a lot you can learn from looking at butts. And next up, we have a new graphic novel series available in both English and Spanish about Olivia Wolf, who lives in Monstros City. And she and her other supernatural friends, her vampires, and she's a werewolf, and you know all these little monsters, they go to school. Here you see them introduced. And they solve mysteries. In this case, their teacher goes missing, and the only clue is a moldy sandwich. So they have to find out what happens with, with him. And, you know, it would have been okay except for those darn kids. And I love the fact that this is available both English and Spanish. There are not enough graphic novels available in Spanish, but they're very fun. They're great for the kids who just love those over-the-top adventures, a thrill on every page. It's also safe, spooky. It's not going to really scare them, but it does have a little, you know, frisson in there of, of uh, something scary happening. And then we have the giants. So, yes, this is coming soon, and I think the kids will love it. Next up, I promised some things that are available in Spanish that were not beforehand, and this is Big Love in Spanish. So there you go. And this is diverse families, um, starting from very small family up to the whole world. So, yay, Big Love. Then we have uh, Deseo, which is, you know, when a family is wishing for a new baby by Matthew Cordell is now available in Spanish, which is great. A new Chris Houghton book, Mama Pinguini, Pinguina uh, is la mejor. So perfect for this week since we just had Mother's Day. And they have a lot of, of the Chris Houghton books. They also did um, Shh, We Have a Plan, which in Spanish is Shh, Tenemos un Plan. Very fun. And then I'm thrilled that they have the Elise Grisbel El Rosa, El Azul y Tú. So this is a book about gender identity and gender equality and done in this gorgeous graphic nonfiction format that she does so well. And I think it's just a, it's really useful to have. So lastly, I have to show you Red Comet Press. So Red Comet Press is out of Brooklyn and they do books from all over the world. This one originated in France and translated by Angus Killick. The Great Girl, this will be a great one for story time. And so we have here um, the Monster Delivery Service, and he's got this little this little pink package to deliver. He rings the doorbell, so hopeful, and she doesn't come, and she still doesn't come, and he gets increasingly frustrated and angry, and and before you know it, he's completely destroyed the the door. It's reduced to smithereens, and she comes up, and oh, it's a present for my grandchildren for my 99th birthday. You know, it just takes her a while to get to the door. So this is a story ultimately about family and friendship and frustration and ultimately forgiveness.
So very, very fun. And that is a great grrr. Next up, it's really cold outside. This is a really bird story. This is the fifth in the series of easy reader chapter books that are told in a graphic novel format. And really bird, you know, has big emotions, big, big feelings, and has trouble just dealing with the things he wants. Because he, when he wants them, he wants them now. He wants them the way they, he wants them. So he, everybody else is playing outside in the snow, and he is just cold and a little bit miserable. And eventually he learns how to get along outside. So his friends are very kind and understand. So there are lots in this series. And what I really love is that, um, yeah, is that we have four so far and the kids just really love these books. I, I handed one of these to a kid not too long ago and my husband was next to me and, and the kid just picked it up and hugged it to him and walked away beaming. And my husband said, that's really your favorite thing, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it is. Sorry, honey. Yeah, I love you too, but that's my favorite thing. So this is the Really Bird series from Harriet Seifert, who has written 500 and some odd books for kids. So yeah, she knows. She knows what she's doing. Next up, The Rescue's Finding Home by Tommy Greenwald, Charlie Greenwald. They've written several um, easy chapter books and chapter books for kids. The illustrations are by Shiho Pate, who I think did just a beautiful job with these. These are about two rescue dogs. So if you have a shelter, reading to shelter dog program at your library, what a perfect book to share with them. And these two dogs meet in the shelter and they become friends there. And then guess what? They get adopted together and they go to the same family and they get to be friends there. So it's a book about new experiences and making friends and just, um, you know, enjoying each other, enjoying your, your life together. So this is The Rescue's Finding Home. Beautiful. Next up, Gust Gustav and Henry. This is a series, um, the second in the series. The first one was Space Cake, Space Time Cake, and this is Tiny Ant Island. So for kids who love narwhal and jelly and dog man, those kinds of books, this is perfect for them. These are a puppy and a pig who have lots of great adventures together. They are big, big friends, and they go on um, these wild, wacky things that are just kind of stretch your imagination but also are just so much funny and I love this kind of art that has the the pop of color in there and just makes it even more fun to encounter um fun fact in space time cake there's a librarian so it's a fun way to share a life for sure so perfect for those kids who think that they don't like to read but you know what they will love this one so there you have it. And lastly, from Red Comet, I am thrilled to share with you 101 Ways to Read a Book. This is by Timothée de Fombelle, illustrated by Benjamin Shaw. And this is one that is not just for kids, it's for all ages. ALA has already started working on a poster featuring the art from this book, and I think you'll see why. These are all the different ways, all the different positions you can read a book in. So um, the classic is surprisingly rare. The innovator upends the norm. The romantic can weather any storm. So this is very entertaining and just fun to share. And I could, I think, again, could be something that could be shared each day, a different illustration, a different image. So much fun. So yeah, the specialist digs in, like at that, you know that kid who comes up to the, uh, to the, the circulation desk with a huge stack of books all on one specific topic. And this is 101 ways to read a book. So perfect for book lovers everywhere. And I bet we have a few here. So please contact me, uh, Ellen at PublisherSpotlight.com. Follow us at Publisher Spot, at Pub Spotlight. And these are just a few of the publishers we work with. Who else do we work with? Well, this is who we work with. So if you follow us on those things, you're going to see books from all these, these different publishers. And we have people here from, as I said, Spain and Czech Republic, but also Ireland, New Zealand, Australia. Um, we have books from India, Japan, Italy, France, uh, Brazil, just looking around here, Hong Kong. So many cool things from all over Switzerland. I could go on and on. So check, check them all out. And thank you so much for spending some time with me today and letting me tell you all about some amazing books that are coming out this summer and fall that are worth time, worth your time and your, 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 uh, all your patrons times too, your customers, your little ones. So thanks so much and happy reading.